I'd like to welcome everybody again to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, uh, sponsored by UPS, 5510 Northeast Antioch Road in North Kansas City, and I'm here with the winning coach from last week. Uh, we had some many moon travels up there, but we had a great time. I know the squad did. Why don't you just talk a little bit about uh, traveling that far, 11 and a half hours to play yeah. a football game? You know, that, I think that's the furthest trip. I know it's the furthest trip we've gone on since I've been here, and I think it may be the furthest trip they've gone on in a long time, maybe 15 or 20 years you or bet. more. Uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a, uh, it was quite a trek, but it was fun. You, know, we, you never know how those, you know, young kids are going to respond uh, when you travel that far and you're on the road for two or three days. And and uh, you know, I got to give the credit to those guys for how well they did with that trip. And it's a lot of time on the road, and and they handled all the different situations we were in, you know, outside of the game, uh, very well. And and I thought responded very well to start the game out as well, and and, and getting it, uh, getting some points on the board, getting a lead. That's where I really see us growing. You know, I've been with you as we've uh, gone into this league, and uh, I really think that the kids are learning how to travel and uh, are able to adjust a lot better than they were the first couple of weeks that we did have travel any distance. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think they're like I am. I, I actually enjoy the travel. Right. Because you know, we're all together and we're, you know, it's a pretty close group. And, you bet. And uh, kind of we're all on the same page with everything. It allows us to get some more, you know, a walk through time in and some of that stuff when we're on the road too. And, you know, it's been enjoyable, and we travel fairly well as far as, you know, our accommodations and make sure everybody's fed well and comfortable, and, and uh, we get plenty of rest and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I can't, I can't praise them enough how, uh, how proud I am for the way that they prepare themselves on the road. Yeah, I thought, you know, particularly early in a ball game, I, I always felt like, you know, I didn't do that much traveling, but I did when I coached in Wyoming, mm -hmm. and you saw how far right. I had to travel now, no so you know it. I wasn't telling stories. But we always had time to prepare probably better because you had all that downtime yeah. with them. Yeah. I really felt like you came out, and particularly offensively, you were sharp. Coach, you were as sharp as I've ever seen a William Jewell team. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it starts out 14 nothing. We, we go down the field twice offensively and, and score and, and get off the field on essentially three and outs, I think, in the first two series, if not uh, maybe one more series there. Um, so I thought we, we responded very well to that. You know, the, the thing that I talked to them most about, too, and, you know, in their situation with the emotion of all the things that were going on in that environment um, with their president dying and, Unexpectedly on Wednesday, yeah, the was president of the institution, and I thought you know, they handled that yeah, well. The, by the, the way, tribute, the, the tribute before, and what the players did, and, and some of those things. You know, any situation, you go back, and I'm a history major, so go back in any war, look at when a, a significant leader dies. You know that that motivates the troops. Uh, you know, go to you, know, you can say say it that way, and you know they were playing with a lot of emotion, and they, they never gave up the whole game. They just kept coming back and. You know, I thought our back was good. He was really good. He was really good, and you know, the emotion of that, you know, coupled it with there being their homecoming and those sort of things, it was some different dynamics that uh, we had to overcome uh, from our standpoint. And I thought we handled it fairly well. You know, when when they'd make a little run, you know, we we'd counter it and, and come back with a big score or, or a takeaway or something like that. And and uh, you know, maybe those are things that we haven't been able to do or haven't done as well in the past. So that was good. To, it was a good growth thing to see on Saturday. Well, the difference, I think, in this year's uh, uh, squad in comparison to some of the things that you've been trying to build in the past is really you've cut down the amount of turnovers. You want to talk about that a little bit? And this yeah. game is a good example so far. I don't want to, I don't want to jinx us uh, in that sense. But, you know, we had four takeaways on defense and didn't, you know, didn't give the ball away on offense, didn't have any turnovers on offense. So anytime you're plus four in the takeaway right. or in the turnover uh, ratio, you're going to win a lot of football games, and you may win some fairly big. And uh, you know that was exciting to see. You know, and that's that's you know things that we harp on every day in practice, both offensively and defensively, in our special teams game. Is that hey, when it's our ball, we need to take care of it. When it's theirs, we need to take it away. And, and there's different things you do to to coach that. And you know, we're finally getting closer to where we want to be there. You know, you're never satisfied with those things. There's some other situations we dropped a couple interceptions and and uh, you know some receivers and and running backs that we'd like to see have some better ball security. You know, if they're seeing air between between the ball and the, and the person, then, you know, that's not very good ball security. We had some of that the other day, too. Uh, we were just very lucky that uh, we were able to maintain the possession. 
Yeah, and, and like I said, you, you're right about the uh, opportunity. When you don't give the other team an opportunity to score extra because of turnovers, you've got an opportunity to score some points. And we're going to get into the second segment talking a little bit about your offense and uh, some of the things that they do. But I looked at this this ball game. I saw improvement in a lot of areas. Uh, uh, and I, your specialty teams, you know, you had a couple of returns that really put you in tall cotton mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So overall, you talk about your young squad. Before we get in offense, defense, and especially teams, they are growing, don't you believe? I I, I do believe that. I think we're we're doing a lot of good things right now, and um, you know, can some things be better? They always can. But I thought our special teams were really good at, at times the other night. Our kickoff team was was Very tremendous. Good. You know, Colby Fowler runs down there and makes some tremendous plays on kickoff, and you know, the return yardage and some of those things, and you know, getting the ball off every time on punt and. And that sort of thing, you know, you look at, and those are the those are the little things that make a huge difference. And uh, you know, anytime you can be good in all three facets, good things are going to happen. And the takeaways, you know, obviously help that as well. And we need to continue that. Well, we'll get to our second segment in just a second. You know, I, I'm really excited about some things we're doing over there on the offensive side right now, and we just need to continue that momentum. Get ready for real tropical deliciousness only at Golden Corral. It's our brand new Tropical Island Grill. This is like a tasty trip to the islands. We're talking real island cooking at its best. It's perfectly marinated grilled Key West chicken. It's breaded spicy Cozumel Island shrimp you have to taste to believe. It's grilled Fiji lemon pepper tilapia. It's fire grilled sizzling teriyaki sirloin and much more. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet, still for one amazingly low price, and it's only at Golden Corral. Help yourself to happiness. At Shelter Insurance, we're people who know that the first love of your life... I need you to take the shoes off. ...might have been made of steel. Thank you. Shelter Insurance. For your auto, home, and life. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Ask Agent Kimberly Sidden about Shelter's auto insurance discounts. I'd like to welcome everybody back to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, uh, sponsored by UPS 1510 Northeast Antioch in North Kansas City. Uh, Coach, we're going to get to the nitty-gritty and the meat and potatoes right now. We're going to start uh, talking about the offense, defense, and uh, especially teams. And I want to I want to start off with the defense this yeah. week because the offense really did play well. And yeah. have a lot. But defensively, uh, they were able to break a few big runs. Um, we weren't in our gaps where we were supposed to be, and that's just the fact yeah. of life, and that's football. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, we, we're again, we're we're still growing there, and and uh, because of some injury things on Saturday, we started uh, two more true freshmen at two of our linebacker positions that hadn't really played much college football before, and you know, and to tell you the truth, they responded very well to be being thrown in the fire there and, and having to jump in and do some things, and and I'm proud of their effort because they gave great effort, uh, you know, and and through our scheme. Um, we we missed some about four or five different gaps uh, throughout the course of the game, and they had a they had a tailback that could really play. He was a and, player. Uh, he was a low to the ground and could tough run to and bring physical down. And, and ran with good leg drive, and and uh, we had trouble with him getting him on the ground. A couple he was times a man. And he found a couple open gaps uh, and, and broke for a couple four or five big plays and. You know, and if you look at how, how we played defense the other day, we played really good defense outside of about five plays. And those five plays turned into probably 130 yards of offense. Yes. You know, and you look at the stats and those things, and, you know, if you hold a team to under 200 yards of total offense, you're going to say you had a great day defensively. You give up five plays for 130 yards, and they have 300 and, and some odd yards of offense, then you go, okay, well, they played okay on defense, didn't play great. So we've got to – We've got to continue to chip away at those mental mistakes, which we have. You know, five is significantly less on gap responsibilities than we had the week before and the week before that. And so we're making good progress there while we're playing some, some new faces as well. And, and uh, that's some stuff that we've got to continue to grow at. Um, you know, you know, we've got to be better as coaches at getting them more and more looks, as many looks as we can every week in practice. And, and uh, so, you know, that stuff will come. You know, that's a growth thing. You know, our strength right now may be in some other places, not because of our athletes or, or those type of things, but our, our veteran leaders, uh, as far as our veteran guys that are playing on the field, we've got more in some other areas than we do on the defensive side right now, and, and we've got to grow up in a hurry there and continue to grow. Well, let's move right into the offense where you do have a lot of great yeah. players. You know what? And I want to tell you, I was very impressed 
uh, the first two drives, and I'm not exaggerating, mm -hmm. is the best two drives, pre preparation-wise, uh, you were ready to roll. And boy, you guys, you really came out and you surprised the old bull you didn't even tell me about, but you threw a lot of those short yeah. routes and really wore them out. And what I'm noticing, you know, you don't only have one or two receivers, you, and, and, and really Sheldon does a tremendous job mm -hmm. with this. He really spreads the ball around. You know, I think he targeted eight or nine guys the other day, uh, counting receivers and backs and, you know, that's a lot of guys to try and get the ball to. I know we had two different tight ends with touchdowns and a couple different receivers and a running back with a with a swing pass, pass. touchdown. So we're Anchor, yeah. Yeah, we're talking five different, you know, five different guys at five different positions essentially that uh, you know, had touchdowns and, and we had a, a significant number more guys that had catches and you know, he does a, he's he's seeing the field very well right now and you know, offensive line wise we we're able to do some things up front and protection to make sure he had time to to make some good decisions back there and, and he'll tell you I think Sean will tell you you know if he's not hurried and he's not rushed he's gonna make some good plays uh, you know his, his his you know mistakes in the past for as far as throwing throwing it to the wrong team have come from when he's hurried some things in his in his uh, progression or or hurried his uh, technique and those type of things and you know I, I'm really excited about some things we're doing over there on the offensive side right now and we just need to continue that momentum you know it, the thing I'm most proud of, Ms., you know, the turnover thing is huge. And, and not having any turnovers as many times as we threw the ball, as many times as we, we possessed the ball in the running game as well, that was tremendous. You know, we've got to continue to do that. And our, our red zone efficiency, again, you know, was extremely, right. extremely good. Very I think we good. were 100% again in the you're, red zone. And that's two weeks in a row, and that just hadn't happened here before in a you, long time. You know, two questions. You know, we covered the receivers. We didn't mention many names but because there's so many. And of course, when we talk about Sheldon, he's a trigger man, yeah. obviously. But I really think you're three running backs. You really got three go-to guys now. Whitney's your number one yeah. guy. And Carr is a great mm -hmm. compliment coming in. Yeah. This Cook kid's going to be a player. Yeah. You get him settled in. I saw you, and he ran it. That one outside zone where he popped it for about yeah. 34. He's got some quicks. So you got three guys you can go to there, too. And I think they're really developing into a unit, and they understand the role. Right, and, and we're getting Andrew Edwards back now, too, who's coming off an ankle sprain. You saw him just a little bit at the end of the game. We wanted to get him back in there to check that ankle out. And, you know, so we feel good about the guys we have back there. And we don't talk a lot about the guys that we're, we're hoping to redshirt this year. We've got a couple in our freshman class that are really special as well that we're, we're hoping to be able to, to uh, get another year in the weight room with. And, and I think you'll be excited to see them as we go forward. But... Really excited about the production we're getting out of some of those positions. You know, as a coach, we're always going to push for more things, and there's some things we can do better with ball security and, and uh, route running and, and blocking in the passing game and some of those things. But uh, really excited about where we've progressed there. We just need to continue to progress. Yeah, real quickly, Rick Cole asked me a great question on the long trip home. He says, how do you think our offensive line is doing? I think they're doing a great job. I think they're improving every game. That's what I'm saying. I think yep. playing those first two games where you took a lot of criticism yep. for playing them, mm -hmm. I got your back. You're seeing the growth from that. Yeah, I think so, you know, and we've been really, really beat up on the offensive line, and we're still a little bit. We're we're probably more healthy right now than we've been in a while. And, you know, we've done some things in even practice. Even at the beginning and, of the year, right? Even at the beginning of the year, we've done some things in practice to try and get a little bit more fresh up there. And it's, it's working in some ways, I think. And, you know, now, you know, as you know, as a coach, you know, you're going to have injuries. It's just on what, what position they're going to be at this week. Yeah. We've got some other injuries on the other side of the ball that we need to get. You know, Jeff and, the, and our sports medicine staff will get working with this week. And, you know, just like every Saturday, we'll, we'll have enough out there to play, I'm sure. Well, the Adelaide finished this seg second segment, and hopefully you'll hang around for the third. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the league and some of the things we're going to look forward to in the season. You know, one guy that really sticks out to me, Colby Fowler, was tremendous in some different areas, and especially on kickoff. This is corporate headquarters. As you can see, I have a unique business. How do I compete with the big boys? I've got this fancy business address a marketing department, a distribution center, and a great team, great team, even a cafeteria. That's mine. From packing and shipping to printing and mailbox services, come into the UPS store for everything a small business needs. I love logistics. Hi, this is Kurt with MetroFreeStuff.com. MetroFreeStuff.com, we support our local organizations. That's a big part of the free and free stuff. Please visit our site today to find out more about our website design services. We design small business websites from $300. We do what we say we're going to do when we say we're going to do it, and we're not happy until you're happy. Please check us out today for all the local businesses we support here in the Liberty area. www.metrofreestuff.com. Proud to be a partner with William Jewel 
athletics department. I want to welcome all the Cardinal fans to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, sponsored by UPS, 5510 Northeast Antioch in North Kansas City. And Coach, uh, we didn't get that second segment, it wasn't long enough for two uh, babbling <laughs> coaches. Let's talk about your speed. We touched on it in the first segment. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the specialty teams. Yeah, you know, that was, that was something that on Saturday I thought we did extremely well in, in a lot of areas. You know, they, in special, in special teams for them, their head coach has been a, a former special teams coordinator, some different stops that he was at. And so they did some things on special teams that could, if you were not prepared for it, make it extremely difficult for you. How they lined up a, uh, you know, swinging gate type uh, on the extra point. extra point, and you know they tried to fake it twice, and we got them stopped on that, and which was big in the yeah, ball game. Was, and everybody kept big. asking me, Coach, why are they doing yeah. that? You know, but you know they, they make you work harder. They make you work a lot harder on special teams and, and be prepared for a lot of different looks. You saw their kickoff had some bunch type looks on it, where they were mixing numbers and final counts and all of those things. Same thing on their on their uh, punt block and. And uh, he did, did some different things on kickoff return. And, you know, I thought we were very, very well prepared there. And Coach Weigel did a great job all week of getting those guys and getting them in all those different situations, which is extremely hard to do when people don't realize that, you know, we've got all these different phases that we cover throughout practice in the course of a week. And, you know, special teams probably doesn't get quite as much time as the rest of them. You know, we, we probably give as much time to special teams here as anybody. You do a great uh, job with but, it. But, you know, it's still – you've got a limited amount of time, right. especially when you're playing a team like that. It's going to give you all those different looks and all the different situations. And, and uh, we did a, a tremendously good job with that, and the players executed very well. And, you know, you know, one guy that really sticks out to me, Colby Fowser, was tremendous in some different areas, and especially on kickoff. I saw him run down the last kickoff and, you know, run through two guys, throw another guy, and, and make a great tackle he on, really the, on the ball carrier. really made a great play on that one. Because I tell you what, if May went to the house, if yeah. he doesn't make the play. Yeah, and we, we, we went with him for our special teams player of the week this, this week, and there's a lot of other guys that maybe it could have gone to, but his extra effort, you know, got him that award this week. You know, you know offensively, uh, there were some guys over there with some big production, and, and uh, you look at maybe three or four guys that you could talk about in the conversation, you know, Hard not to go with Sean Shelton uh, this week, you know, having, I think he was 29 for 42 for 300 plus and five touchdown passes and, and you know, a couple more first downs with his feet and, you know, continues to, to do well. Again, the most, you know, the thing I'm most proud of there probably is the lack of, you know, lack of turnovers and him really, you know, doing making a good all the job controlling in the, the football and, and uh, making good decisions there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, defensively. Again, there were a couple guys we looked at there, but the guy that really kept sticking out to us, our corners all played well, but the, the guy who played really well, I thought, was Jack Bissonette and, uh, you know, continues to play extremely aggressive out there, and both in the run game and the pass game, and, and uh, went with him on the defensive side. And then, you know, a big hit, you know, Kane Southwick, who was in on a bunch of special teams and played some on defense for us as well. He's got an honor streak. Uh, yeah, he does. He, you know, he's a tough little sucker, and, you know, he just keeps coming at you. He got... He got called for a penalty on, on a big hit that, you know, yes. it probably might have been or may have not have been, but, you know, blocking, we, don't, we don't. Blocking the back, wasn't it? Yeah, I, no, I think they called helmet to helmet. Helmet to I helmet. I think they, that, they called helmet to helmet was the flag, and, and that, he didn't get the big hit on that one, but he had another one on a kickoff return that was, uh, was really, really good, and uh, you know, he was our big hit for, for the other one there. And, you know, the guys that, you know, the unsung heroes that we talk about, you know, the guys that are making us better in practice every week that, that we're hoping to have another four years of eligibility for here this year or after this year. Uh, Robert Hurd, a, a guy from Robert and Derek we went with on the offense and defensive side, and, and Derek's a tailback uh, that's been doing some really good things for us. One of the ones I mentioned earlier, uh, and, you know, Robert on the other side of the ball at a defensive end position where we've had Fitz blocking him in practice. Right. So really excited about that. Make a guys. difference in a team when you yeah. get a great practice player. Exactly. You know, and they'll we'll take you know, High V does a great job for us here in town. We'll we'll they all get to go out to lunch on Thursday and, you know, enjoy one of those all you can eat deals and get off campus and so it'll be fun for that group. But, you know, those guys, you know, were very good for us this week and, and we had a lot of players do some really good things, but those those were where the votes came down this week. Yeah, you know, in a game like that, when you score so much, there's so many uh, great statistics in mm -hmm. a positive way. It's really tough to come down and pick four, five, six guys because it is a team effort. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, what you really see in this team, and I, my last question in this uh, segment, is I think overall from A to Z you have so much more team speed than you had before. We're, we're getting there. We're I know it's not yeah, where you want yeah. to be, but improvement-wise. Yeah, yeah, it's it's probably night and day from what it was three years ago. Uh, you know, you're always trying to improve at that position because, you know, 
you know, the old cliche that I've used uh, a whole bunch of times, Jim Gladden, who was mm -hmm. at Florida State, who's a jewel grad from 62, you know, told me one time, you either got speed or you're chasing it. Mm -hmm. So we want people to be chasing us more than we're chasing them. Right. And, and we're getting more of that now. Uh, are we where we need to be yet? You know, one could argue we're, pro we're, we're not, but, you know, we're, we're taking some steps to get there. Yeah. I, I think you've really shown a difference, and like I say, you can see it in a lot of different areas, particularly in specialty teams, and I think, you know, we probably pretty much covered that, but it was yeah. a great win for for Jewel. It's one of the few games, uh, like you said, I talked to some of your coaches before you came in for the show. At least they could breathe, they told me a little bit. Uh, you know, it, it was, you know, this is our, that was our first ever back-to-back -back Division Two win, yeah. and then we hadn't really thought about that until the other day, and uh, that was, you know, it, it's it's a neat deal to get kid to get two in a row. You know, you know how it is as a coach. You get greedy now. You want three. Well, if you didn't, you need to get up and leave. <laughs> That's exactly you know, right. Somebody else will be doing the show. <laughs> That's right. Okay, that'll take us to our final uh, segment, which we'll get to and talk about Central States, talk about the league, and talk about this coming Saturday here. Too. They're a four-three. They can do some different looks defensively. Primarily a four-three look. So. I'm my own man. I can work from home. I can make meetings. I can make deadlines. I can make proposals. I can remember birthdays. I can entertain clients. I can pay for lunch. Yeah, I can do it 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 3.15. I can do anything. Done. On it. Yes. Taken care of. 50 two-sided bound color presentations by tomorrow. I can do that. How do I do that? I love logistics. Sometimes happy marriages fall apart, and divorce is the only way out. At a time like this, you need an attorney who will listen to you and will work for you. I'm Stephanie Shutt, and I understand that divorce can be hard for anyone, and I know the importance of a fair settlement. The decisions that are made now will affect the future happiness and well-being of you and your family. At Costello and Farah, we will fight for you. Call or visit 505-HELP and let me help you. Well, welcome back to our final segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook, sponsored by UPS, 5510 Northeast Antioch Road in North Kansas City. And, uh, of course, we're going to talk about Central States with another conference game. You, know, you already alluded to back-to-back -to -back Division yep. Two wins, but now we're in a conference, and uh, we really are. You know, you laughed when we had our show at the Cork and Brew the other day, but you, you're the conference leader right now. <laughs> well, we're, like that pressure we're right 1-0. Now, we're, we're 100. Our winning percentage is, is, you know, we're at 100% right now, and, you know. You know, the other teams, there's a couple of them that are 2-0, and so yeah, one could true. argue that may, maybe they're ahead of us right now, but, you know, we don't have a loss. So, you know, in the conference, you know, it's, it's just like every other conference in the country. Anybody can beat anybody on any given week, and, you know, Central State two weeks ago goes out and has a really good win against, you know, the preseason number two ranked team in our conference in Urbana at their place, and, you know, and then goes to St. Joseph last week, who we play, you know, down the road here, I know, in the next four or five weeks, and, you know, makes it a really good game. I think loses by a touchdown uh, on the road this weekend. And, you know, they're going to be hungry again to, to get another conference win. You know, they do some really good things now. They are athletic. They are athletic in a lot of different are they, spots. Are uh, they normal spread look, 3-4, uh, 4-3? Four, yeah, four, three, yeah they're, they're, uh, they're a 4-3. They can do some different looks defensively, primarily a 4-3 look. Uh, offensively, you know, they're, they're a spread type team. You know, get under center and do some things, though, and, and run 12 personnel and 21 personnel as well, being a lot of empty, which we've seen them in. I'm telling you, you're, you will be extremely impressed with their quarterback. Uh, you know, he's, 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 got, he's not real tall. You know, he's 5'11", maybe 225 pounds. But Typical Division two type kid. Though. Boy, Very he athletic. can play. You know, they put him back there, and he'll make a lot of plays with his feet, and, and trying to contain him will be a huge challenge on Saturday. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, there's no bones about it. The offense goes around him, and uh, if he has a good day, it may be a long day for us. So we've got to really work hard this week on, on trying to figure out some things to – to contain him and, and make sure that we can limit. He's going to have some big plays. There's absolutely no doubt. You know, they, they, go to a, they go for it on fourth down a lot, so you're going to play four downs. And, you know, maybe on the other side of the field as well, they're just going to go for it because they have a lot of faith in him, and he's made them right on a lot of things. You know, I've seen him on film on a fourth and one go for about 35, 40 yards for a touchdown. So, you know, you can't take a play off against this group uh, in their offense. And then defensively, again, they're athletic on defense. You know, show you some different looks. Primarily a 4-3. It's going to be similar to what we saw against Missouri Western, as far as the look. Uh, you know, but again, their athleticism allows them to to get in a base look and and play pretty well out of it. And then special teams, when you're as athletic as they are, 
you know, you're going to be good on special teams, and you know they don't disappoint there either. So it'll be a, it'll be a big challenge. You know, we're both, I believe, you know, we're, we're one and zero in the conference. They're one and one, and both trying to get our second win in the conference. And you know, we'll, we'll have to play well to get it done. Well, don't you think that's pretty much what we're looking at in the conference? So anybody yep. can beat anybody at absolutely. any time. Absolutely, absolutely. Don't you feel that way? I've seen that. You know, just you know, people telling me scores about games that happened last weekend or, or what have you. Some really close games that maybe you thought wouldn't have, or some people beating other people that you didn't think would would be in that situation. And you know, it's 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 college football. Uh, that's the way it is everywhere. And you know, you got to be you got to prepare yourself to play every single week, or or you could get beat. Right. I, I totally agree, you know, and it's big. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about it and what, you're, what we're trying to do. And let's talk about your show that you have after the ball yeah. game. It was a big success number-wise. Uh, yeah. uh, we had a little technical difficulty as far as the sound, and, but we'll, we'll get there, yeah. okay? We'll definitely get there. Yeah. The key thing, though, is that what you're trying to accomplish. Why don't you talk about the cork and brew and what you're doing there? Yeah, I thought that was a tre tremendous deal last, you know, the, our last home game. Uh, when we went down to cork and brew on the square here after the game. There was between 120 and 150 fans there and and we did a live you know broadcast you from there that I thought was really really good. A lot good. of fun, and, wasn't it? Yeah, I, and and I've, I've been assured that the uh, the audio things are all taken care of and we won't have any issues there going forward. And that and that's you know if you can say there was one issue, that's what you would say. But I you know I'm not even sure really that was good. an issue. You know that was just one of those things. The first time you have something that, that may happen, you know, and, and you know it was it was fine. I, I think most of the people that were in front could hear everything we were saying and. And let's be honest, some of them might not have wanted to hear you and I up there babbling. But, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. fun. Yeah, it was a great environment. You know, here's how I look at it. You know, we're all going to sit and talk about the game afterwards anyway. And we might as well be talking about it together. And, uh, you know, the, it, was, it was a great group of players that showed up as well and their parents and some other external fans. And, you know, it was just a great, fun, uh, lighthearted environment. And uh, I think everybody enjoyed it. Well, the rest of the way schedules all conference schools, am I correct? Straight through with the rest of the conferences from here to the end, so we've, we've got to have a good showing here. Yeah, you know, you, and you really do look at the scores. Uh, we were talking about it after the ball game the other night and got on the iPhones and seeing mm -hmm. where everybody was on all the apps and right. stuff. And, uh, you know, it is very balanced. It uh, is. I don't think people uh, really realize that everybody has a shot, and, uh, and definitely the Cardinals have a shot as well. Yeah, well, we've... We've got as good a shot as anybody right now, I suppose, with with you know winning all of our conference games so far. But you know we've got a tough road ahead of us. You know we're going to be on the road some here in the next couple of weeks after this week, and you know against some good teams. And you know we've got to worry about us. You know and, and worry exactly. less about our opponents right now, and continue to worry about fixing the things that we need to fix to play at our best level because we haven't played that we haven't played at our best yet not in all phases at yeah. the same time yeah and that's still coming you know and there's some growth things we've got to do you know from an age standpoint or maturity standpoint and plays played standpoint in some areas and and uh, you know just some focus in some other areas and we'll get there yeah I, I think we will too and I think we're slowly but surely climbing that hill. yeah I just want to thank everybody again for another uh, Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Really uh, enjoy talking to you. It's always great after win. Things are a little easier to talk about. Absolutely. Too. And I want to thank UPS 5510 Northeast Antioch Road in North Kansas City for their sponsorship. Really appreciate their support. And we'll see you on Saturday at 1 o'clock here for the ball game, a big conference game against Central State.